Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this beautiful Friday morning. Frederick Zercher is on the phone. Uh, he is an elementary school teacher, a professor of education in France. Is he calling in from France, Robin? I don't know. Uh, he's involved with uh, product development, marketing, operations, and general management of several U.S. and Far East based companies. And he's written an interesting book. It's called Idolatry of Blood, Religion for a Postmodern World. And this might include some conversation, some debate perhaps about the very existence of God. Good morning, Frederick. How are you doing? Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling you from uh, Loma Linda, California. Loma Linda! Yes. You're on the other side of the world. I, I am, I am. <laughs> well, thank you for calling in early and to be with us like this. It's a pleasure. So, uh, th th now, the the book is Religion for a Postmodern World. What is a postmodern world? A postmodern world is a world that has difficulty deciding what they want to believe. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you and, know, uh, yes. it is interesting how throughout history we've all had our, our own beliefs and our own reasons for those beliefs. That's true. Uh, so what do you believe? Oh, I believe in, uh, in a God who is unfortunately quite different from the, <laughs> the way he is often portrayed by most religious groups of this world. And uh, my book uh, is really an attempt to straighten out uh, the reputation of God and show that uh, what he intends for us all is to be perfectly logical and perfectly loving. And perfectly logical is, is something that atheists will say. They will say, use some logic. If you use some logic, you would, you would realize there is no God. And, and they even go to, so far as to say there, will, there is no intelligent design. And, and I will always, I mean, I'm the guy who says there is a God. I don't know that I know all the answers to the questions about God, but there's got to be intelligence behind all of this. Look at how this is amazingly created it's just it's just hard to believe that there's no intelligence it is uh, in fact i use the arguments of atheists to show that there is in fact a god <laughs> and i start up my book citing some of these atheists who have uh, had very good reasons to this uh, uh, to to get away from uh, oh yes religious beliefs absolutely I, I i do agree with what you're saying right there and here's one a great example um, if you watch an, a, an, a televangelist, and I'm not picking on all of them, but you know that you know we've had our share, and their whole purpose for being on that TV is to get your money. Oh, absolutely. E e easily, that could be all you need to see to make you go away from God and say, "Well, forget this. This must be a big phony thing." But but if you, I've always said, just look at the teachings. Look at what the actual readings say. Do, do you know, there's a lady on, on the internet, I don't know if you know who she is, and I don't really know her. Her name is Esther, I think. And she she claims that she can channel several different spirits, and they come together under the one name Abraham. Are you familiar with this lady? I'm not. Okay. I'm not familiar with her at all. So, okay, and I'm not going to monopolize your time with this story, but I just want to tell you this, that in, uh, in an interview that she did on uh, the internet... And she's apparently not the one speaking. She claims that it's the it's the spirits talking through her. They ask her about Jesus, and she says, "Well, Jesus is written by people who who lived long after Jesus died. They don't really know what he said." And she kind of really downplays the whole story. And and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you're telling me that these spirits are talking through you, and you don't believe that the other spirits could talk through the whoever wrote the books? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense. Very interesting, yes. All right, so, so give us some examples of how you used uh, the very arguments of atheists in order to make your point. Well, logic to me is a creation of God. Without logic, we would have accomplished nothing in this world. He created us with the ability to understand, recognize, and uh, be rational regarding the difference between what is good and what is evil. And to me, anything that is good is something that helps humanity progress and develop and be enhanced. Evil is destructive, kills, or hurts society. Mm -hmm. and, and, and which argument of the atheists 
support the belief in God? Well, uh, uh, the belief of atheists is that um, there is a problem with uh, uh, religion, and when you analyze what they say, wanting to remain on the territory of pure logic, they end up uh, saying that uh, religion is uh, does not uh, represent God, which they are correct in saying, because religions are relying essentially on superstitions and traditions that are meaningless and void of logic to explain their gods, when in reality, Scripture denies that approach to God. Okay, and explain that. How does Scripture deny that approach to God? I'm not, qu- I'm not challenging you, I'm just trying to find out what you mean. Well, you have uh, several examples in Scripture where channeling, for example, the principle you were just talking about, uh-huh. is is not acceptable to God. Why? Because there's only one God, and the moment you think you can channel with spirits, you are influenced by them, And when in reality God wants us to be standing on our own two feet when it comes to our belief systems. He wants us to be perfectly logical about what is right, what is wrong. If it hurts society, it is wrong no matter how we look at it. That's right. purpose in life is to enhance life. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, and you know, I, here's another thing I will say. Now, this is really not a religious comment as much as it is a philosophical comment, but if somebody says to me, I don't believe in Jesus, let's just use this one man named Jesus Christ just for this discussion, because I, I can't talk about every religious deity. I, this is the only one I really know. So they say, I don't believe in Jesus. And I will say, well, what do you believe about me? Do you believe in me? You know, do you believe, oh yeah, I believe in you. And I said, well, would you trust me with your car? Gave me a car, would you trust me to drive your car and come back? Yeah, I would trust you. Well, isn't that the same thing as believing in somebody, in their word? What exactly did Jesus say that you don't believe in? Do you believe in you should love one another? Yeah, well, that's what he said. That's right. So how do you, how does somebody say they don't believe in somebody? Because I'll tell you this. So one of their pop culture heroes, John Lennon or whoever, and I'm not picking on John Lennon because I, I was a John Lennon fan myself, but why, why would we believe in John Lennon who said all you need is love, but not Jesus who said all you need is love? Well, exactly. I think that uh, the religious world even admits that uh, life is all about love, but unfortunately uh, they have... Uh, a concept that implies that somehow external forces should act upon us to make us loving. And this is where there is something that has gone wrong in, I believe, all religions, whether they be Christian or not. Uh, We expect the Holy Spirit to change us, when in reality the Holy Spirit is the way God thinks. How does God think? Well, Scripture is clear to tell us God is love. He created us in His image to reflect that love in all that we do and say. Thus, if we depart from that basic principle of love, we are departing from God, and at the same time we're departing from the teachings of Jesus that are entirely focused on how we should love and how much we should love. And that God gave us free will, and with that free will comes common sense and feelings. And it's just so uh, frustrating to me that there are a lot of people out there that prefer to hurt others instead of help. Oh, you're so right. Absolutely. That is so sad. And uh, the news today is a good example of that. There is so much going on in this world on both sides of the issue. You have under one hand a church that is so forgiving. It's, it's touching. On the other hand, you have all this killing and massacres taking place in the world all at the same time. No wonder people are confused. All in the name of religion, by the way. Yes. In many In many ways, it is true. And, and I don't think any of us can say that our religions... The histories of our religions are, are pure. We, we've had our own run-ins, and, and, I'm, and I'm not saying we do them now. I'm not trying to pull that one on you. But And, and at the same time, you know, if you say to me, who am I prejudiced against? Who do I not like because of their label? You know, well, I, I don't dislike all Muslims because guess what? I have some Muslim friends, and they're, they're beautiful. So do I. So who, do, I, do I dislike somebody because of their race? No, I probably have a friend from every race on the planet, and, and, <laughs> and they're all kind of nice people. 
So, the, so if you think about the the world, you know, I don't know. I love this conversation. By the way, it's just too big. It's, it's a big topic. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's- Frederick, and it is the topic of my book. It is the topic of your book. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, bo- the book is called Idolatry of Blood. This is a deep thinking book, a deep thinking author. And if you don't mind, t- we'll take a little breather. We have to listen to the weather, which is a lot easier to handle. So we'll, <laughs> we'll listen to the weather and be right back. You're listening to WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Friday night, a thunderstorm in spots, otherwise partly cloudy, low 73 to 75. On Saturday, periods of clouds and sunshine with a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon, high 92 to 94. Partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm on Sunday, high 92 to 95. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. All right, 17 minutes after 11 o'clock. This is such a fascinating conversation. The book is a fascinating book. You might take issue with some of the things that Frederick Zercher writes in the book, and uh, that's just the, w- the way the world is. Frederick, I, I want to tell you something about the church that I used to go to with my mom. At the be- it, it was a, uh, a Protestant church. It is a Protestant church. And at the beginning of the church services, they a- ask everybody to silently... Uh, confess their sins, and and God will forgive them. Th- later on in the service, the the pastor will say, "Please out loud, and at random, just say the a prayer request, so that so that we can pray for somebody or for some circumstance." Okay, and I remember saying, because in the Catholic Church, you you verbally confess your sins. In in the in the Lutheran Church, you don't do that. So this was a Lutheran Church or a Protestant Church. And, and um, I said, well, why does God hear us when we're silent for the confession, but he doesn't hear us unless we say it for the prayer request? Why do, <laughs> why is, I mean, can you imagine if at the beginning of the church service, everybody said, oh, forgive me, I was thinking about the woman in the third row. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. And, and you wrote this. This is what you write in the book. You say, indeed, forgiveness is always free. No confession is ever needed. The confession of sin was not a condition to be pardoned. It was a condition to begin the journey with God to overcome sin by learning what love is, how to love, and how much to love others. Here again, traditions stand in the way. They have influenced a faulty translation of Scripture. And then it goes on from there. I won't read the whole thing. But, I mean... You, you're making a pretty powerful point right there. Do you want to add to that? Oh, yes, of course. There's so much to be said about that, because confession is clearly not something to benefit God, mm-hmm. nor something to uh, obtain forgiveness. God is more than willing to f- forgive us, no matter what we have done, and even those sins that we don't even know we have committed. Therefore, confession is really for my benefit. And uh, mm. for, to show me that if I have sinned, it is only because I have lacked love somewhere in my life. At some given point in my life, I have sinned for because of lack of love in my heart. The, the only way to overcome sin, the only way to heal the sin problem is to recognize that I lack love in order to ask God to provide me with more love in my heart. How do we know what sin is? I mean, aside from violating the Ten Commandments, how do we know what sin is? Any act that is hurtful to others is sin. 
That's a good definition. I would like that definition. That's a real good definition. Um, w- w- <laughs> uh, humans, uh, people, they try to dissuade other people from believing by putting through uh, scientific theories, uh, things of that nature. How can the uh, uh, scientists and the re- and 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 the people who believe in intelligent design coexist? Well, uh, there is, in fact, no difference between science and religion. If both were right, they would both be in agreement. The problem is that we have fairy tales, let's face it, on both sides. (laughs) And because of those fairy tales, neither side can agree with the other. So the job that we have and that we're confronted with in our modern world, postmodern world at that, is to find a way to reconcile the two. And if we fail to understand scripture or the message of God, we will automatically be at odds with science, which also observes the laws that God has created for the universe. Well, if if we go back to the logic part, logic would dictate that eventually we would be smart enough to see that science proves that there is a God as opposed Mm -hmm. to the other way around. Exactly, exactly. And I say in my book that the message of God is a, uh, is a proof that there is a God, because if we were indeed the product of what science says we are, uh, the product of the law of the fittest, of natural selection, and so on, we would never have thought about this very topic we're discussing right now, which is love, how to acquire it, how to become more loving, and eventually even merciful. Be ye merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful, is the call we uh, receive from God daily if we choose to be in Christ, and I would say into Christ rather than in Christ. We believe into Christ. In other words, everything that Christ was about, which is all love. What what is uh, what are your thoughts on karma? Uh, I, th- I think in Christianity we call it um, uh, uh, recipro- the law of reciprocity. In, in other words, if I do something wrong, something wrong is going to come to me. If I do something good, something good is going to come to me. What do you, is that? A, do you think that's logical? Do you think that's true? No. Uh, no, rain comes on the wicked as much as it comes down, and uh, so do tornadoes, and so do earthquakes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have to recognize that the reason we have problems in our world is because there is sin in our world. It's not necessarily mine or yours or anybody else's. It's because there is sin. Why is there sin? Because there is lack of love. Why is there lack of love? Because we misinterpret God, who is the author of love, and logic is are the laws of god universal they are and they have to be okay if they're universal that means they apply to the animal world too well this is where we have a problem because nothing in nature today reflects the true character of god though he created nature we have to recognize that this was in eden in a place where even animals loved one another and did not eat one another and so on. There has been a degradation of life throughout the universe because of sin. Let us remember that sin does not begin on earth. It already existed in the universe when humans were created in Eden. And uh, this would be another long conversation because it's extremely interesting to consider the, Mm -hmm. the fact that the universe is in disarray because of sin, which means lack of love in the universe. Did God create sin so that we would become stronger? God did not create sin. God created freedom. And the freedom he gave us is to choose if we want to use this freedom constructively for the benefit of others, which is love, or destructively, which is to hurt others one way or another, to advance one's ideology, uh, so, religion. Okay, so I'm, I'm, as, as a human, I'm going to make mistakes. When I make mistakes, and, and even a mistake that might hurt somebody else, I hopefully have learned from that so that hopefully I won't do that again. I won't hurt somebody's feelings. I won't, I won't be arrogant. I won't be good. You know what I mean? I, aside from something that will put me in prison for the rest of my life, yeah. I, I will learn from it. So in a way, my own sin 
helps to make me a better person, helps me to grow. Well, your, your own sin opens your eyes on what the problem is. And it's an opportunity for you and for me to uh, go to the word of, words of Jesus who teaches us what love is in a definition that humans usually fail to accept. I know. He goes yeah. so far as to say love your enemies. Yes, he sure does. I've, I've often said that I couldn't, I, 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 am, <laughs> I guess this is true for everybody, I'm just not up to the yes. level of Jesus. If, if somebody came into my house and was going to shoot my family, I would probably shoot that person I, I, or, or do yeah, something. Sure. Like Je- Jesus, oh. I don't know what Jesus would do, but, but I don't think I could do what he could do. I don't think I could do that. Right. I think you're right, and I think you express the feelings we all have in one way or another, but that doesn't mean that the goal is not to love our enemies. And uh, it's true that our love might be the size of a little seedling uh, oak, uh, which is not very large, but it should grow. And if it fails to grow, we die spiritually, so to speak, because spirituality is all about growing love in the human heart. And that's what adults loving parents are supposed to do uh, to their children. They're supposed to encourage their children to grow and find their own way in the world. But uh, uh, sometimes these adults are just as mean to the children as they are to other adults. Unfortunately, yes. We're not always the examples that we ought to be. You must be a great teacher. Uh, Frederick, thank you so much for being on the air with us. Uh, we're not done quite yet. We've got a couple more minutes, but I wanted to save that time so we could give the book away and give people a, an opportunity to write down the website, etc. But what a great conversation. I, I know we could have talked probably for hours and hours on this subject. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, F- uh, Frederick Zercher spells his last name Z-U-R-C-H-E-R. I have a copy of the book, Idolatry of Blood, Religion for a Postmodern World. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to me. Uh, the rest of us have to go buy it. And Frederick, um, let's see, we need some websites or, or some other information to get the book. Uh, yes, uh, of course, you can go to Trafford uh, for the book or anywhere online where they sell books. Uh, it's available. But um, my website and the preferred website is where I have my blog. It's Frederick Zercher, F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C, Z-U-R-C-H, all in one word, dot WordPress, in one word, dot com. Oh, okay. You're on the WordPress thing. Oh, excellent. Okay. I love that, those blogs. Let me uh, answer the phone, give this book away. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Yeah, this is Jim. Jim, the book will be waiting for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Again, Frederick, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Out in California, do you still live in France? No, I taught in France until 1980. Then uh, I moved uh, to Florida at first, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Where did, nice. where did you live down here? Oh, I was in um, in the Miami area, actually in Hialeah. Oh, okay, okay. Nice area down uh, there. Uh, and thank you. So, yeah. If you're ever back here, we'd love to have you in the studio. This was a great, uh, great and thought-provoking interview for sure. It's a pleasure. I appreciate uh, your interviewing me and uh, uh, giving people a chance to know more about my book. Frederick Zercher, thank you so much. Uh, Again, uh, the book is called Idolatry of Blood, Religion for a Postmodern World. And we'll put all that information online. The video, the the, um, recording we just made will be online as well. (laughs) We'll be right back. Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Friday night, a thunderstorm in spots, otherwise partly cloudy, low 73 to 75. On Saturday, periods of clouds and sunshine with a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon, high 92 to 94. Partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm on Sunday, high 92 to 95.
This is a Fox News alert. I'm Lillian Wu. A major win for those in favor of same-sex marriage. Fox's Shannon Bream is outside the courthouse where justices have just handed down their decision. The court has run the board in favor of those who do favor same-sex marriage, not only saying there is a constitutional right to same-sex marriage, but saying that if you're married in one state that does recognize it and another one that doesn't currently, it's got to be recognized everywhere. The president calling the decision a big step toward equality. One gunman is dead another on the loose after an attack on tourists on a beach in Tunisia. At least 27 people are confirmed dead after an attack today in the Tunisian resort town of Sousse. It's about 80 miles south of the capital of Tunis, where Islamic militants killed 22 people in March at a national museum there. Fox's John Huddy and consumer sentiment hitting its highest level since January this month. Fox News, we report, you decide. For over 75 years, GEICO's kept an eye on the future, keeping customers happy with things like 24-7 customer support and emergency roadside service. And to prove it, here's one of our commercials from over 75 years ago. At GEICO, we promise to always find innovative new ways to serve you. In fact, we're so innovative, in 75 years, they'll listen to this old radio commercial and think, wow, they were innovative. Wow, we are innovative. Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. Performance Bicycle, where great rides begin, has created an event so big, there's only one way to say it. Everything's on sale. Now through Sunday, everything's on sale at performancebike.com. Over 10,000 items reduced for this once-a-year event. Plus doorbusters up to 70% off. All the top brands, all the best gear, all the savings, plus free shipping. Performancebike.com's Everything's On Sale event ends Sunday. Go to performancebike.com now. Some exclusions may apply. Visit performancebike.com for details. All right, 28 Eight minutes before 12 o'clock. You know what tomorrow is, Robin? It's Saturday. It's Saturday, but it's also <laughs> National Wear Your Sunglasses Day. Oh, nice. You should wear your sunglasses every day. The doctor says it's really good for your yeah. eyes. Right? 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 Dr. Lang would always tell you that. Uh-huh. Uh, you know where they have some really good sunglasses at a really good price? Where is that? A lot of people don't think about Jerry's Point and Gun for sunglasses. Uh-huh. But they Excellent. do. They have some really good brand name sunglasses. Ruben is on the phone. They've got lots of other stuff, too. Come on, Ruben. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How are you guys doing today? Wait, ready for the weekend? Ready for the weekend. Uh, we need a new pair of shades, though, because tomorrow yeah. is National Wear Your Sunglasses Day. <laughs> it is, and that is awesome. And, you know, we just so happen we can help you out with that. Here's Jerry's Pawn and Gun. We have a full line of Costa sunglasses, lanyards, the straps to go on the back, the cases, T-shirts, caps. We have the whole Costa thing going on, brother. Wow. What, what is the average price? What's a, a price range for the Costa sunglasses over at Jerry's? Costas are usually from one seventy four ninety nine to two fifty two fifty five ninety nine. It depends on whether you get the plastic lens or the glass lenses. Yeah, they're styling. Yeah, and, and the doctors will tell you that these are really important. And and the, do they have the polarized and the unpolarized? Yes, we have both of them. We um have a like I said, a complete line of the Costa stuff that they make we keep something for everybody and they are excellent if you don't have a pair you must come get a pair they'll help your eyes and they're stylish they're fabulous come get them yeah and and, uh, one thing real quickly the doctor would tell us that if you're riding a motorcycle you probably would be better off with the unpolarized because it'll help you see the puddles better you don't want to run through puddles or oil slicks right on a motorcycle Exactly, and, and the lenses, uh, like you touched on, are, are, are made for glare, and they will definitely help the way you see. And a motorcycle and coasters is like socks and shoes that go together perfectly. Excellent, mm-hmm. and, and I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because tomorrow's sunglass day. Yes. But you've got more than sunglasses there. Uh, let's see, where should we go from there? If I'm in the sunglass department and I turn right, what will I see? You will see the jewelry department. The jewelry department. Nice. (laughs) Yes. Gold, diamonds. It's that time of year, summer. You know, uh, come see us down at Jerry's Pawn and Gun. We have so many deals. We're also looking for deals. We're looking for tools, uh, good items, uh, antique rifles, pistols, anything of value that you're tired of looking at, or maybe you just need a little help with something, need a little money in your pocket. Either way, 
come see us. We'd love the chance at it. We're, we'll do the best to help you, and uh, we, we just need you. Come on in. Come see us. There you go. This this uh, Next Saturday is 4th of July, yep. and having Independence Day on a Saturday is such a good, good thing. I mean, for, for me, anyway, most people have the day off anyway, but it's just, it's just going to be a big party day, mm-hmm. so get your 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 grill and i'm sure jerry has some of the, you still have some grills over there yes we do we actually have a couple of nice ones we've got a couple of deep fryers we also have your american flag stop by here and celebrate america's birthday in our independence we have all kinds of types of we have art antiques we have brown and a full brown and line of guns we have colt guns we have a lot of collectible winchester rifles antique german pistols we have hummels jewelry we have everything at jerry's pawn and gun you know i could talk about it all day but the best thing is for you to come just on go down, down there yeah it out. yes yeah. meet us and just uh it, it's a one in a in a lifetime experience of shopping and hospitality so give us the three things we need to know the phone number the address and the website all right the phone number is area code 352-622-3780 Our address is 404 Northwest 8th Street, Ocala, Florida, 34475, of course. And our website is www.jerrysonlineoneword.com. There you go. All right. Excellent. Three good pieces of information. Yeah, don't. It's, it's awesome. We have our musical instruments, and we're having a lot of big sales coming up for the 4th of July. We've always got deals, but we're actually having some sales. We have some really nice hats, camouflage, stylus for hunting. They're all 75% off. Our DVDs are on sale. We've oh, got wow. some safes on sale. We, 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 we're blowing it out, man. We're, we're ready. We're ready to deal. Blowing it out. I love the safes. Ruben, yeah. Ruben thank you so much for being on the air with us. Tell Jerry and, and everybody over there that we said hi. I will definitely do that. Uh, say if you need some help on something or looking for a good deal, come see us. 49 years, service in Ocala in Central Florida, the gun headquarters, Jerry's Pawn and Gun. Once in a lifetime shopping experience, hospitality second to none. And by the way, you are still supposed to come back here and uh, play a little set for us here in the store. I'm still waiting on I you. know, I know, I know. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ru- well, Ru- God, Ruben. Thank you. We love you guys. Couldn't do without you. You're the best. Thank you, Ruben. We'll be right back. All right. For generation after generation, America's heroes have been fighting for our freedoms. And it's those freedoms that have allowed us here at Mike Scott Plumbing to prosper and grow in this great land of ours. At Mike Scott Plumbing, we help thousands of customers every day with everything from irrigation to repairing the kitchen sink. But if there's one thing that absolutely, positively needs to be maintained,